Hello folks and welcome back to the channel. In today's rank mall video we're going to rank Creator's full discography. Creator from Germany is one of the world's most prominent thrash metal bands. The album debuted back in 1985 and vocalist Mille Petrasa and drummer Jürgen Venterail has kept the band going strong for some 35 years. They've released some absolute classic thrash metal albums back in the 80s but they've also managed to release a bunch of very successful thrash metal albums of late. So if you're a creator fan, then smash that like button and make sure that you're subscribed with the bell notifications turned on. Because my goal here is to rank a couple of more of those German thrash metal bands here in the future. But now it's time to rank creator's full discography. The worst creator album is in my opinion Endorama from 1999. And in the 90s, Creator started to experiment with this type of gothic industrial style. And Endorama was the peak of that, and since that's not anything that I like, then it was quite obvious for me to put this album dead last. It's not a particularly heavy album either, it's almost like a rock album with some dark industrial undertones. And I know that there are some Creator fans out there that dig this album, and kudos to them for doing that. But I don't think that one of the greatest thrash metal bands that the world has ever witnessed should sound like this. For me that's just a waste of talent. Endorama is well produced and the band can obviously play, but Mille's vocals sounds a bit compressed here, which I don't like. And I don't know, but this album never did anything to me, it's just meh. Next. In 13th place we have the album that came before Endorama which was Outcast, and it was released back in 1997. And I can say the same about this record. It's a rather weak semi-industrial 90s metal type of album. If Creator was a beverage, this would be Creator Light. <laughs> it just lacks the speed and aggression of those earlier albums. Leave This World Behind and Phobia were the two hit songs on this album. If we're even allowed to mention hit songs and Creator in the same sentence. And I think that they recorded music videos for those two tracks. I mean, they are alright songs, but it's not exactly the type of songs that I feel like listening to when I'm in the mood for some creator. Next. In 12th place we have Renewal from 1992, and this was definitely a huge disappointment when it came out. After a string of six absolutely great albums, the 90s came, and with it, Renewal. I mean, their last studio album Como Souls was more or less a masterpiece, and then we got Renewal two years later. And uh, this was the band's first step away from thrash and into a more modern sound. This album reminds me a bit of Sepultura's Chaos AD that came out a year later. Thrash metal was definitely dying, and the bands tried to move on into new territories. But whatever Creator was doing here, it wasn't very flattering to them. Mille sounds real bad on this record, and I usually like his vocals. There are some cool riffs here and there, but I really do believe that Renewal belongs in the dumpster. Next. In 11th place we have Hordes of Chaos from 2009, and this is my least favorite Creator album of the more modern era. This song Hordes of Chaos is kinda cool. But this album has this type of Gothenburg sound to it that I'm not really a fan of. But at least this album is thrasher than those 90s industrial albums. And Creator recorded a music video for the song Hordes of Chaos, but that music video looked more like a Man of War video to be honest. And I don't hate Hordes of Chaos, but for me this isn't anything that I enjoy that much. Next. In 10th place we have Cause for Conflict from 1995, and this album also sounds a bit like Sepultura around Chaos AD. It's semi-thrashy groove metal or something like that. It's definitely part of the more modern metal trends that swept the metal community in the 90s. But I think that Cause for Conflict is the most interesting album from the industrial era of Creator. So if you're going to check out one album from that era, then I'll suggest that you start with Cause for Conflict, because the band still plays alright here, it's just that the production on this album is ass, so 
next. In ninth place we have Phantom Antichrist from 2012. And this might just be the creator's most melodic album. Ever since Samuel Lesernio joined the band in the 2000s, Creator has had a much more melodic sound. It won't be a complete stretch to say that there is a bit of that Gothenburg Melodeath sound to this record. I know that this is quite a popular Creator album, but it's an album that I rarely listen to these days, so for me this album belongs on the bottom half of Creator's discography. Next. In 8th place we have Gods of Violence from 2017, and this is their latest release, at least when I recorded this video. And uh, it was the band's last album with their longtime bassist Christian Giesler, whom has been with the band for some 20 plus years. And Creator recorded a music video for Gods of Violence and Satan is Real. And both of those have millions of views, so Creator is definitely doing well these days. The intro of Gods of Violence sounded a bit like Metallica's Fade to Black. Probably not their intention though, but hey. There are some great riffs on this album though. The Satan is Real riff is very cool. And the Gods of Violence is a solid album overall, if you can handle the melodic riffing and the kind of modern production values. Next. In 7th place we have Enemy of God from 2005. And this is one of the better creator albums of the more modern era. Enemy of God is a little more straight ahead and less melodic than some of their more recent outputs. But this album ain't completely stripped of melody though. There is a bit of that Gothenburg Melodeath sound to this album. But I wouldn't say that it's too prevalent here. Enemy of God is a pretty good album in my opinion. And Impossible Brutality is one of the better songs on the album. Next. In 6th place we have Violent Revolution, and I remember when this album came out back in 2001. It was so cool to have the real creator back again, after a decade when they were more or less ashamed of their thrash roots. So I was real happy to see them back thrashing again. I mean, this album should have been the follow up to 1990's Coma of Souls, which the artwork here is a tribute to by the way. And this was the band's first album with Samuel Lysirny, who brought a lot of melody to the band. I think that he's an excellent guitarist, but I don't like it when creators start to sound like a melodeath band. But there is a bunch of great songs on this album. The Patriarch, Violent Revolution and Servant in Heaven, King in Hell. So Violent Revolution was creators comeback to thrash, and I think it was the best creator album of the more modern era. Next. In 5th place we have Como of Souls from 1990, and it really hurts me to put this album as low as my number 5 since I love it and I think it's a masterpiece, but the creator's discography were filled with masterpieces so I had to put Como of Souls as my number 5. And this album is a great starting point for those who are unfamiliar with creator. It's still very aggressive, but it's also well produced, and a great album overall. It's not the worst caveman stuff of their career, so. And uh, songs like When the Sun Burns Red, Coma of Souls and People of the Lie are amongst the best songs that Creator ever wrote. Next. In fourth place we have their 1985 debut album Endless Pain. And here we have some real caveman thrash. This was one of those mid-80s albums that were just a whirlwind of aggression. There are hints of early black and death metal on this album, and Endless Pain is probably their most underrated record. It's up there amongst their best, but it rarely gets the cred for it. It's just a beast of a record, definitely the closest thing to Hellhammer or Bathory that this band ever produced. Next. In third place we have Terrible Certainty from 1987, and this was the band's follow up to Pleasure to Kill, but it's a bit cleaner. The caveman days were over to some degree, and this album has a more professional thrash production. The death and black metal vibes of their early efforts had been toned down, but this album is still very fast and aggressive. They recorded a music video for Toxic Trace, and it's also one of the better songs on Terrible Certainty. 
I also love Storming with Menace, Blind Faith and As the World Burns. Terrible Certainty is a brilliant album and it's still somewhat underrated. Next. In second place we have Extreme Aggression from 1989. And this album is also very fast and unrelenting. It's a superb thrash record. Great riffs, powerful drumming and Mille is as aggressive as always. And I love the title track, Some Pain Will Last, Betrayer and Bringer of Torture. There's just a lot of great thrash tunes on this album, and I have nothing negative to say about this record at all. It's just one of the best Euro thrash records of all time. It's just a masterpiece. So, next. The best creator album is in my opinion their 1986 masterpiece Pleasure to Kill, which was one of the greatest thrash records to ever come out of Europe. The intro of the Choir of the Damned is majestic and soothing. And then the shit hits the fan, and the half hour that follows is amongst the most aggressive music that the world had ever heard back in 1986. It's primitive, yet you can hear the instruments well. And Venter's drumming is amazing here, it sounds like he's clubbing some skulls. It's just awesome and sinister. And the title track Pleasure to Kill is amongst the best songs that the band ever wrote. I also like how the song Riot of Violence breaks the full on thrash assault midway through. And it has a few mid tempo riffs, so the listener will be able to catch his breath. And then the pestilence will give the listener another pounding. And Pleasure to Kill is an amazing rip ride and the perfect assault on your ears. It's just a perfect record. And here we have my full creator ranking, and to no one's surprise, I prefer their 80s catalog above anything else that the band ever recorded. But I see Creator's catalog as a discography with four sections. The first section was the early years, Endless Pain, Pleasure to Kill and the Flag of Hate EP. Very primitive stuff, kinda caveman thrash with death and black metal undertones. The second section here is their more pure thrash period with the cleaner production etc. And that period stretches from terrible certainty through extreme aggression up until coma of souls. And then we have their third period, which is their experimental phase, where the band experimented with gothic metal and industrial metal, and this is renewal, cause for conflict, outcast and endorama. And then we have the return to thrash period, and during this time the band sounded more modern, but it's also their most melodic period, and it stretches from their 2001 comeback album Violent Revolution up until today. And my favorite eras of the band are the first two, the caveman stuff and the cleaner thrash period. And now I want to hear your favorite creator records. Do you agree with my ranking? Or do you perhaps prefer some of their more recent albums? I know that a lot of creator fans are really into their new stuff. Or do you hold Extreme Aggression or Comb of Souls as your number one? Let me know. And feel free to rank their full discography if you're familiar with it. And if you're a creator fan and enjoyed this video, feel free to leave a like, that really helps the spread of this video. And subscribe if you aren't already subbed up. And if you want to support my work, then I'll suggest that you become a patron like these fine gentlemen. Or go and grab yourself some Ruthless Metal merch from my merch store. I'm also on Spotify, Facebook and Discord if you want to join my communities or listen to my thrash metal playlists. And you can find all my links listed down below. And uh, let me know whose discography I should rank in the next Rank em All video. And uh, thanks for watching and I'll catch you guys in the next video. Bye bye.